A cordial greeting. Today is Saturday, May 6, 2023 and this is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. I would like to talk to you about the new European model forecast for the 2023 hurricane season in both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. As we have discussed over the past few weeks, we remain attentive to the Pacific region, where the El Niño phenomenon is slowly developing, and we know that this will have major implications. It should mainly reduce cyclonic activity in the Caribbean region, the Gulf of Mexico, and parts of the Atlantic. However, we have also noted that the Atlantic has warmed impressively in recent weeks and currently has ocean surface temperature anomalies at extremely high values. This could definitely have an important effect on the hurricane season and counteract the cyclonic decrease one would anticipate when El Niño is present. We had also recently discussed ocean surface temperatures just southwest of the United States, where temperatures are colder than usual, and this also has an impact on favoring cyclone formation in the eastern Pacific and the Caribbean region. So, again, we see that we have several factors that are competing between a less active hurricane season or a more active one. Remember that El Niño tends to decrease cyclonic activity in the Atlantic and increase it in the eastern Pacific, but warm temperatures in the tropical Atlantic and cold temperatures toward the southwest of California help cyclone formation in the Atlantic. So, again, the big question is which of these factors will be dominant. We had already discussed in the last video that El Niño will possibly be the factor that most impacts cyclonic activity, and if it were not for El Niño, we would possibly be talking about a forecast for a very active hurricane season. However, forecasts continue to predict that El Niño should have a significant effect, although we remain very attentive to see how surface temperatures in the tropical Atlantic evolve, and this unexpected warming should definitely have an effect on the updated forecasts, possibly for a normal or slightly more active than usual hurricane season for the Atlantic region. For our followers in western Mexico, it is anticipated that the hurricane season will be more active than usual in the eastern Pacific due to the formation of El Niño and also due to cold ocean temperatures to the west of Baja California. Having discussed this, I would like to show you the European model forecast. Note that the European model continues to forecast that a moderate or strong El Niño will develop during the next few months and anticipates that between June and July, we will already be in El Niño conditions. But I wanted to tell you that once El Niño arrives in the Pacific, the atmosphere takes time to react to these changes, so from what I see, June, July, and August could be a bit more active than we had previously anticipated because if the El Niño develops in June, the sheer winds should begin to dominate this region. However, by the end of August, September, and October, many meteorologists think that the beginning of the hurricane season could be more active than we had thought, but by then, the sheer winds should be making it difficult for systems to form in the Caribbean and southern Gulf of Mexico regions. So with this forecast from the European model, we can see that historically when we have the El Niño phenomenon in the Pacific, in blue color, we see historically how the Caribbean and the southern Gulf of Mexico have less activity than usual. However, I want you to be very aware of the subtropical region and the area between the Caribbean and Africa. As you can see, the impacts of El Niño in this sector are much less than in the Caribbean region. This is because the shear winds usually locate in this sector when El Niño arrives. I mention this precisely because we suspect that this region of the Atlantic possibly sees the greatest cyclonic activity during this year. On the other hand, the European model has also reacted to the warmer temperature anomalies we have in the Atlantic. This is why the European model now predicts a more active hurricane season than usual. Precisely when we have the tropical and subtropical Atlantic with very warm temperatures, this has historically helped the formation of cyclones in the Atlantic region and also in the Gulf of Mexico. However, remember that El Niño must be cancelling this effect. But again, let's look at this area between the Caribbean and Africa where historically, when we have warm ocean temperatures in this sector, it reflects in greater cyclone density in this zone. So once again, we see that this area is precisely the one that we think may see more activity than usual during this year, while it seems that the Caribbean region will see less activity. So let's now look at the comparison of the European model forecast in April, which showed for the peak of the season warmer than usual ocean surface temperatures in the Atlantic region, the El Niño phenomenon, and normal temperatures towards the southwest of California. However, when we compare this forecast with the forecast that has just come out for the month of May from the European model for the peak of the season, we see some changes. First, we have a hotter Atlantic than we had in April, and we also see that the region towards California is colder compared to what we had in the April forecast. So these two changes mean that the conditions could be a little more favorable for seeing cyclonic activity in the Atlantic. This change can be seen reflected in the precipitation anomaly forecast expected for the peak of the season, August, September, and October. Look at this image of what last month's forecast was, where more rain was forecast towards the north in the Atlantic. 
but when we compare it with the new May forecast, there is a very significant change, and now the European model has the tropical and subtropical Atlantic region with more rain compared to what it had in April. So this change responds to what we had talked about, that it now has a hotter Atlantic compared to what it predicted a month ago. Finally, let's see the forecast that the European model had in the past month, where it had a hurricane season close to or slightly more active than normal in the Atlantic and close to normal in the Pacific. Now, when we compare it to the new forecast, we see that the cyclonic activity that it anticipates in the Atlantic region has increased considerably, with up to 40% more accumulated cyclonic energy. So, in general, the European model is now predicting a more active hurricane season than usual in the Atlantic, but with caution since this is a model forecast. Remember that the European model last year also forecasted a more active hurricane season, however, they know that the cyclonic activity in the Atlantic was close to normal. Finally, let's see in the next image where the European model is predicting where the greatest cyclonic activity should concentrate during this year. And precisely, we see again the area of the tropical Atlantic and the subtropical region of the North Atlantic in the zone where the greatest cyclonic activity is likely to be concentrated this year. Also, see the very active East Pacific with areas where we may see more cyclonic activity than normal towards the south of Mexico. Well, that would be all for today's video. Stay tuned in the coming days as we continue to publish new forecasts that are coming out. Remember that we are already one week away from the beginning of the hurricane season in the East Pacific and three weeks away from the beginning in the Atlantic. So, the time to prepare is now. It's always important to be ready for the hurricane season, regardless of whether little or much cyclonic activity is expected. Remember that a single hurricane can affect the region where you live and cause extensive damage. I hope everyone is well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red button at the bottom of the YouTube video and share this video with friends and family to have a greater reach. Have an excellent weekend, everyone.